What's up, Daily Doodlers? I hope you're all having a great day today. If not, then you're in luck, because today is day 17 of October? Okay, okay, yes, yes, I know, I know, it's the 18th, I know that, but... Okay, in come the excuses. I'm I'm sorry, guys. Really, <laughs> my sister was visiting from Ohio, and I really wasn't in the mood to work on art while my sister was here. I really wanted to hang out with her as much as I could. So yeah, that that's that. And also, like when I was doing the actual recording of this, the cameras were giving me a lot of trouble. So. There's that too, and I definitely could have worked around it, but I didn't really want to, so there's that. Um, <laughs> about the picture, so today's, today's, uh, prompt, well, yes, yesterday, the 17th prompt was swollen. Swollen of all things, okay, um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say about this one, because if you look up Swollen, then it's the past part, partis, participle, part, participle, part, it's, it's the past word for, for swell, and so if you click on swell, then a bunch of different definitions come up. Now there's the obvious ones that are like, um, become larger or rounder in size, or another obvious one is full or gently rounded shape or form, but then you get down to some of the less obvious ones, some of the ones that are a little more dated, things that we don't really use anymore and are informal, and it says, a person of wealth or high social position, typically one perceived as fashionable or stylish. So it might kinda be cheating, but it is technically a definition of it, so, like, I don't, I, I honestly don't know if this counts or not, because technically this is, if you use the word swell, then te technically you can refer to a fashionable person of high social, po social position. So that's what I drew, because swollen, swollen, okay guys, swollen, swollen is such a weird prompt for this. I was like, okay, I don't really want to draw someone with like a black eye or something because I already did that for another one of my prompts. If you want to see that prompt, then go ahead and head over to either my Instagram or my Twitter. The links will be in the description down below. But I've already drawn that, so I don't really want to draw someone like injured. So I looked up the definition for inspiration and this was what I found. I hope you guys don't think I'm cheating. Um, I kind of think I'm cheating in all honesty. I, I, I'm kind of think I am because the def, the prompt isn't sw swell, it's swollen. So I don't really know if swollen still applies to this definition i don't know i don't know let me <laughs> let me let me know in the comments down below did you think i cheat I, did, did, did you think i cheated i don't, I don't know let, let me know uh what you guys think but anyways getting to the actual drawing part of this we're four minutes in and i haven't even talked about the actual drawing at all um <laughs> Uh, as you can see, I had a lot of trouble with this arm. I don't know what it was about this arm, but it was giving me so much trouble and I couldn't figure out it was either too skinny or the, the angle was weird or this or that and I just I couldn't figure it out. I had no clue what the heck I was doing. So that was fun. Yeah, see, now I'm working on the other arm. Now I, don't, now I don't know what the other arm is supposed to look like. So I just had a lot of trouble with it. The 
this is... I'm really bad at drawing clothing, okay? I... I don't know... I never know what to draw. I'm always like, okay, what patterns should I put on it? How should I make it look? What should I do? And... I, I never know. I, I don't know. Like, typically when I draw clothing, I draw someone in a plain t-shirt or a long sleeve solid color shirt uh, with jeans on. That's, that's typically my go-to when it comes to clothing because I have no idea what to do. Occasionally I put like, I don't know, dots on it or something, like little polka dots, but I'm like, you know, there's only so much you can do with that. Um, so, I don't know, this was, this was really weird for me, trying to figure out how to draw this, draw her, her dress and everything. I looked up a lot of different references, um, but I didn't want to just be, like, copying any of those references, so I, I sort of just tried to find my cat scratching on the door, sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> But anyways, I, I tried to just sort of use my imagination and figure out what to do, so I'm kind of just playing around with the dress, figuring out what exactly I want to do here, and uh, messing around with her face. Her face was a little weird at this point, it was sort of lopsided, so I tried to fix that, and I think by the end of it, um, I did I did alright. It, it looks kind of weird still, but... It's, it's like a natural sort of weird, like it's supposed to be that way, rather than, um, rather than it looking like it's just drawn by someone who doesn't know how to draw. So I'm really glad that I fixed her face, uh, and then, then this is me trying to figure out how to draw the background because I didn't want to just leave her like chilling in the air. I wanted to draw some sort of background and I was trying to figure out what to do, so I looked up some ballroom references. Guys, references save lives. Never ever copy, never ever plagiarize other people's art. Plagiarize? Is that right? Just play When you use the word plagiarize, is that only referring to copying uh, essays and articles and stuff, or does that work for, does that, does that work for art as well? Either way, don't steal art. Don't do not copy art unless you're doing like a still life or something. Do not copy it. Just use the references to help give inspiration for little ideas. Like I used one one picture I used for the floor where I was like, okay, um, the ballroom has. Okay, one second. Let me let my cat in. Yeah, so like one reference I used for the floor, where I was like, okay, it kind of has this border, this like uh, dark gray border around it, and then it has a white square or rectangle in the middle of the ballroom. That's where they do all their dancing and stuff. So I used that for the floor. And then I saw another area, I saw another picture that on the sides they had these really cool windows that had pillars on the sides and everything and I was like okay that's kind of cool and so I did the pillars and I did the window but then I thought what if instead of doing it f a full window what if I just did a window on the top the little like semicircle thing and I did a curtain underneath so it kind of looks like that's where the guests enter they come in from the curtain and so I made it a curtain instead um, so yeah, so <laughs> references save lives. Always, always, always use references, but never ever copy. So that's my little, little piece of advice for the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, so here I am inking. I got some new, uh, new marker things that are, I guess, pens, uh, that I really, really like. Um, I mean, 
I think the only reason that I really like them is because they're different sizes. Like I have, I now, I only had my Mangaka Flexible Fine. I don't know how big it is, but it's, it's like fairly, it's not really super small, but it's not like really super big either. So you can't really get uh, really thin lines unless you like try really, really hard. So I got this package of graphic markers that has a 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and a one uh, tip, um, all different markers. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, fine tip markers, and then it has one marker that's a brush pen. So I really like those. They're not the most incredible quality, I think, because they kind of they kind of have a weird texture, like when you when you uh, when you put them on the paper or when you're like drawing on the paper you can sort of feel it's very rough and it's hard to keep it going if that makes sense like when I use my mangaka which is my favorite brand so far of the pens that I've tried um, the fine lighters that I've tried um, it's very smooth like you can barely feel it running across the page and it makes it a lot easier to draw the lines um, because it's not like catching against the page if that makes sense so I highly recommend Mangaka um, these graphic markers I just got at Hobby Lobby they were $15 I believe and they're alright I like them because they're different sizes and they're not like a terrible quality or anything like that. Um, it's just the fact that they're kind of rough against the paper that sort of bothers me. But other than that, they're pretty good. I guess if you thought that drawing a person of high social status was cheating for for swollen, then you I can say that her dress was swollen because it's it's very uh, I mean it's it's very rounded it's it's gently rounded in shape or form that's that's another definition you can say that that. <laughs> This is just me trying to justify myself now. Now I'm gathering up my uh, grayscale markers that have been the lifesavers of this challenge. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, my dad. When I, when I explained this challenge to my dad and I showed him uh, the first artwork that I did with these with these markers he was like oh cheating already you're not even on to the third prompt and you're you're cheating already and i'm like this isn't cheating it's fine it's fine this one really isn't cheating because there are some people who use like like prisma color markers like for inktober and technically it is still ink it's not the typical ink that you really think of like uh, pens or whatever, but it technically is ink, so I'm still counting it. It's not cheating. It's fine. <laughs> but I do really like them because they help bring a lot of variation to the piece, and um, they they just they're really they're really helpful, honestly, in in everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but she's playing with a bag right now trying to get my attention.
<laughs> um, this is me working on the curtain, and what I tried to do was I tried to make them look a little rounded, so that, um, so, so that it was like, it looked a little more 3D, the curtains looked like they were folded, you know, and it failed very, 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 you, you can see very obviously that it failed. I fix it later, don't worry, don't, don't you worry your, your pretty little head, I do fix it later, but for now it looks really ugly. I was like, ah, CC. <laughs> Um, at first I was like, well, it is what it is, I can't really change it, um, it's, it's whatever, I'll deal with it. And then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, no, 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 I have to do something about this, I have to, it looks, it looks terrible. <laughs> I do not, I do not care what I do, but it looks terrible. So I just sort of filled in the entire thing, um, and it sort of worked. Actually, looking at the picture right now, um, you can sort of see it in the in the video. But uh, because I layered it that way at first, because I tried to make it look more 3D, um, when I colored over it, the places that I colored in the first place became a lot darker, and so it's sort of looks rounded a little bit. The video just ended. Okay, that was fast. <laughs> oh gosh. This is all your fault, CC. <laughs> all right guys, I will figure out how to cut down my talking and maybe make the video a little bit longer. So anyways, guys, if you did enjoy, be sure to uh, leave a like. And if you happen to be new, consider subscribing to join my little daily doodlers. If you'd like to see the rest of my Inktober drawings, then head over to Instagram or Twitter. The links will be in the description down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.